In the last few videos in this series, we've got into a nice rhythm of building up our little village. Adding in some paths, some buildings, and bringing in some villagers. And today I want to continue with that progress by adding in another shop, as well as some greenery around the village. Working on a little central square between the coffee shop and our new build for today. So with that in mind, let's get into the build and into the episode. So let's start off today's episode by adding in a lovely little tree and some greenery into a central square. This should help break up the grey of the paths and add a little more depth and height to this area. We start by laying an area of moss surrounded by dark oak slabs. Then in the middle of these we work in an oak tree. Working up a trunk of oak logs, and at the top, adding in some branches made of oak fences. Once the general shape is in place, we can start working on the leaves. Starting by filling in the sides of the branches with them, and then adding in some more onto the top to fill out the tree shape. Finally, we can add some drooping leaves in places around the trees. And adding some oak slabs, as well as some buttons in place to give this tree a little more shape. Now, to give this place a feeling like it is managed, I'll surround this tree with a few flowers and some azalea leaves. Now, moving on to the paths around this area, we'll be keeping the paths a very similar style to the rest of the village. Working in our combination of andesite, stone, stone brick, and mossy stone brick. And doing our best not to make any noticeable patterns throughout. Along the waterfront we add in some polished andesite, with some andesite walls on top as a little barrier between the paths and the water. We light up the area with a few lanterns, made of dark oak fences, slabs, and soul lanterns to add in some nice moody light throughout the village. I mentioned previously when working on the other builds in this village, I really love the style and block palette of these builds. So for this build I've decided to keep the same style, but instead of having the buildings side by side, we'll have them in an L shape that fits well with our path down by the waterfront.
working in our standard wall palette of birch and mud up into a certain point and then adding in a transition to andesite at the very top just before the roof to break things up a little bit. Again, our roof will be made of deep slate variants with a mangrove trim. I really am starting to enjoy working with mangrove. It's a bit of a pain to gather, but I'm becoming more and more used to the red color in this world. Working in our experimental overhang technique with chains, fences, and trapdoors around the edge of the roof line. And adding in signs, buttons, and glow lichen around the building itself to give a bit more varying. Our standard window trims of coloured glass panes with warp gates and trapdoors across the top add a yet another pop of colour to this build. Down by the water side, we add in a small storage area with trapdoors, barrels, leaves, and flowers, just to break up this wall a little more. Speaking of breaking up a wall, we add a stone chimney to break up the large back wall and make the transition between the two different roof lines a little easier by hiding the hard parts. This build will be another shop, but with a little more space inside. So we have some room to play around with a fun little floor design. For this floor I'm going to blend in some birch, oak, spruce and dark oak into a little pattern. Again adding the occasional log facing upwards as knots in the floor. We will also, just like outside, add a shelving system with some acacia trapdoors. Here we can add in some storage, as well as flowers and leaves to brighten up the room a little. For the ceiling, we're going to work in some dark oak, starting with some beams of logs, strip logs and planks, and between those, adding in slabs and trapdoors to add in some height variation. We add in stairs at the end of the beams to give the roof more support and a little curve. One thing that I'm trying to use more in buildings are Minecraft paintings. They're nice ways to add colour to a build without taking up too much space. So we add a few to fill up this wall a little bit and bring in some colour to the inside. And finally, since this is a shop, we add in our standard counter to the back here, with some andesite stairs for a till, and a painting on the back wall, again for some colour. I have really enjoyed making this build, taking the elements from our other builds in this village and tweaking them to make something new. We have another shop that we can fill with a few villagers going forward, which will help us gather more resources to expand this village.
I hope you've enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye bye.